Did you make contact with aliens? Were you taken to another planet, to a mothership? How did they communicate with them? Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? outside the simulation. Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. Broadcasting uh, near the Great Lakes upstate in New York. I said that all wrong. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roop. And tonight, it's Cosmic Conditions, the new moon with Mary Decina, Friday the 13th on into the 14th. Good God Almighty. I hope that, uh, I hope we don't have any more zero uh, technological interferences, man. It's been getting pretty damn crazy lately with all the technological stuff going on mary's phone's been crazy uh we had like a major wipeout last night i'm talking about major wipeout with russell brenniger her youtube's been going down so this could be attributed to just everybody's crazy energy or it could be attributed to all the planetary energies who knows we're going to be talking about that tonight though with mary ducina make sure that you get ready because we're not going to have four lines tonight all right, we're only going to have three because Mary's using one of them. And that's just the way it has to be. But I might open up the Skype line, too. We'll see how that goes. I've never tried that. Don't know if it'll work. And you know what they say. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So let's probably try not to mess with it. Real quick before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody knows about the app. Download the new Fringe FM app. It's on every Play Store, Amazon, Google, whatever. If you have the old one and it's not playing like the... When, if you downloaded our app a long, long time ago, delete that some bitch. Get rid of it. We got a new one. All right. So, also, make sure you go check out the new Altar Box brought to you by Lighting the Void and the Esoteric Scholar. It is the ultimate magician, magician's tool. And uh, you can check it out at lightingthevoid.com. Go, ch- go to lightingthevoid.com, click on shop, and go to the Altar Box there. And it's. Um, it's one of a kind deal, man. It's not cheap. It's handmade. I got to make some commercials for it. It's a portable altar box made for small spaces and travel, handcrafted with reversible scrying mirror and chalkboard for sigil work. It's got elegant lining and compartments for storing your tools and accessories, designed for portability and ease for any magician or spiritual work. Fitted floor with universal designs, reversible piece with scrying mirror and sigil chalkboard, reinforced hinges and snaps. And if you want to be an exorcist, spiritual guru, if you want to do 
you know, if you want to be a traveling gypsy, if you want to just do whatever, this thing is the tool to have. So go to lottingthevoid.com, click on shop, go get altar box. They're made to order. It takes about two, three weeks to get yours. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy about this thing. I'm, I'm very proud of it. It's an idea that I came up with and I contacted, uh, Brett from the esoteric scholar. Cause this guy's a woodworker and I told him about it and he's like, well, I can do that. So we partnered up and made it, and it's uh, it's pretty rad. Mary's seen it, too. So speaking of that, Mary's here with us. And if it's your first time listening to Cosmic Conditions, we do a show here every new moon. We've been doing it for a very long time, very, very long time. And tonight, there's some pretty intense energies that she's going to talk to you about. If you've never heard of Mary Ducina, she joins us again for the new moon of Friday the 13th, 2020, on into the 14th, to discuss a major conjunction that's going to be happening well, that is happening right now, and you can also call in for your free reading when we open up the phones after she tells you uh, what's going on out there in those cosmic energies. So, she was born on Halloween, a natural mystic shaman, astrologer, and psychic who started the first psychic call and radio show in Tampa area back in the 80s, currently resides in Tennessee, is available for full readings if you go to MaryDucina.com, and you can tune in tonight, stay tuned t- tonight to hear the energies of this new moon and if you want to call in for your free reading tonight that's 1-800-588-0335 the website is marydusina.com m-a-r-y-d-u-s-i-n-a mary are you alive are you still with us I am can you still hear me yeah i can hear you i can hear you loud and clear what what is going on out there uh-uh. well it's it's both of the things that you said but first greetings audience much love and light to him we'll do an opening hallowed light, uh, seal of light, seal of golden light, but two things that Spirit wants me to start out with. Number one, it's the two things that you said, Joe. It is all, besides just 2020 and the deep dive we've all had to take with 2020 and, you know, shut up, go to your room, wear a mask. It's all gone sideways kind of a thing for a while. The great, yes, and there's astrology to all this, the great reset of the Capricorn planet starting back in January and the eclipses shifting from the cardinal signs of of Capricorn and Cancer in late May. There's just so much that's gone on this year that truly every astrologer deserves a tip and a raise because there is so much to study and convey and try to bring down, you know, heaven to earth, try to make it simple to understand for people. But the two things that you just said, one, I want to mention about your new product, the Altar Box. That's wonderful. It's one of a kind. And what I'm excited about is that you're launching it in the most psychic, intense, as far as alchemy and manifestation is concerned, of the three water signs, Scorpio. So it's not that the water signs aren't all gifted with an extra edge of intuitive prowess, but it's a different expression of that for each one of them. You know, cancers, the moon children, they're naturally empathic and they operate on that gut level feeling, the solar plexus. Pisces, it's a lot of the times through dreams and through fantasy and just, you know, downloads from the galactic center type of a thing. But with Scorpio, they're born with, it's not easy. It's not easy. If you, wherever you've got the Scorpio in your chart, there's a natural acumen for that being that psychotherapist. And psycho can go either way. It can be the plus or the minus Scorpio if you're psycho or psychotic. But it gives that psychological edge it gives that ability and perhaps it's from other life walkabouts other incarnations but there's an intensity that scorpio heavy in a chart of the holy trinity of of your sun sign your moon sign your rising sign scorpio grants that that impetus to want to arise from the pain be the phoenix that comes up from the flames of sometimes even self-destruction i mean Scorpios are the signs that often take their own selves down because of their rigidity, because of their determination to get to the bottom of the mystery or the magic or the mayhem. So to launch that altar box in the sign of Scorpio indeed will catch the intuitive antenna of true magi types out there, male, female, you know, the yin yang is going to be saying, wait a minute, what? Like, instead of me having... My cell phone is my go-to information center. I can now also have my soul 
information center. I can have my altar box and I can have, oh my gosh, it's handmade. And Joe's partnered up with someone that's actually making this with their own, you know, physical hands. It's not just computer generated. And I know all that stuff's fascinating, but we're going back into some old fashioned hands on literally type of meditating on this, invoking with this conscious intention what goes in the altar box what's open and compartmentalized and available for you and your am i did i hear you right that someone can also get a little personalized like emblem or sigil, sigil well, or, maybe maybe we're, like we're, we're kind of working okay. on that, the the details but the original one is is got so it's pretty much made every hand that's been on this thing to order uh, it's made by magicians for magicians you know, oh, so let's make so, it. I've, yeah, I've never heard of such a thing. I've never heard of such a thing. So, number one, congratulations on that because that feels really strong. I mean, it feels really strong. And as an astrologer, we look at no matter what system of astrology you prefer, we look at the the actual birth of when someone chooses to let the world know that they've had a creative birth, you know, Oh, my, my creative child was born on. So you look at the, the, the labor was before you actually announced that it was on the site for sale. So the laboring process sounds like it might've happened either over Virgo Libra. And then now you're actually launching it in the 2020 uh, celestial cycle of Scorpio. So that that's a pretty powerful thing. It, it's, you know, from death to birth, we're all going through this important deep dive, rebirth, transformation. And your other point that you made that I was deep listening to is is when you said, I don't know if it's just the astrology or it's just all the intense energy that everybody's going through, not just with the with the scenarios going on in the United States and the seeking of the truth and is it corruption or is it, you know, media manipulation or all of the above, and then everybody's opinions on top of that, and then you add the fears. And then you add the fears of a fifty fifty split on the people that are really happy with the potential inauguration, the people that are like freaking out over the potential change, you know, in, in power structures, Capricorn is always the power structure. So it is both. And I've never, ever as an astrologer of over 35 years, I've never given astrology exclusive power as to why the energies are in magical uh, frequencies or mayhem madness. It always has to do with as spirit walking this earth for a while in this earthly temple, our intentions, what we allow, what what type of energies we allow. And you've heard me say this before, Joe, I know my clients have, when it comes to energy penetration, you know, and whether that's a, a super, super conscious, subconscious or conscious in our conscious external world, energies do one of three things. They affect us, A-F-F-E-C-T. They can infect us, I-N-F-E-C-T. But it certainly has an effect upon us, E-F-F-E-C-T. So we've got to choose our alphabet very carefully. So with Scorpio, and as we come to this third, nothing's easy this year, astrologically, third supermoon in a row. So they start in September. Then again at the new moon in October. So we've had a supermoon in Virgo, a supermoon in Libra, and now we have the supermoon in Scorpio, which for the layman, that simply means that the moon is in a closer orbit to the earth. And so the moon in astrology is driven by our feelings, by our intuition and our emotions. So we are in the most of the 12 Western zodiac signs. We're not only in the yearly turning of the wheel, of first the veil thins, you know, as we come close, closer to Samhain and in the autumn season of honoring our ancestors and being aware of the effects and the and the presence of those dearly departed, our dearly beloved loved ones and walking in the summer land and the spirit world. And then we go into the festivals of All Saints Day and All Souls Day and the Day of the Dead in a, in a lot of Latin cultures. And now we're then we're coming up to this after 11-11, I mean, we have Veterans Day under Scorpio, and then we have the birthday of the Marines in Scorpio. And when you look at the expressions of the, of the Plutonic, Scorpionic, 
energies, it's like if you think about an assassin, if you think about a trained assassin, if you think about a trained sniper, if you think about someone that's got to get their 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 psychological self to a point that they're not only assigned with saving lives, but potentially taking lives in order to save a life, do the mission or whatever. So you've got this hypervigilance of soldiers that have gone into to active combat, that have gone in as Navy SEALs or special forces and dropped into places secretly. You know, those people that go in secretly, the Marines and the Army, the, the ones that go on shore or swim underneath the murky waters, go in in the darkness of night. So these any kind of first responders, when you think about the ambulance drivers that are the first to arrive on the scene, so to start to try to put it back together, assist, help someone's life, get them rushed to medical care, there's intensity in all of that. So a lot of times people are in shock when they go through, and that's what can create post-traumatic stress uh, disorders and, and syndromes. We go into shock when something's so incredibly sudden roars upon us, you know, like your whole little daily routine that we try to hold on to the, the events of our life that we want to micromanage. Got to do this to make money. Got to go pay that bill. Time to go to the grocery store. You know, what's going on with the crazy trolls? What's going on with the crazy society or political structure of this year? Oh my God, is there, is there a new normal or is there any normal at all? So people are already hyper vigilant and hyper agitated as we come into these final two months of this year. And Scorpio is the most intense sign. What we've got happening astrologically for all signs, let me just say this, for all signs, because we've had all these wonky retrogrades and everything, find, learn, get the astrologer that you resonate with, besides just all the free charts that are on the internet, which is a wonderful thing just to get a free natal chart, you know, to actually start to learn where your planets are. But start to learn right now if you don't have the time or the interest to learn your whole chart yourself. It's a process. It's an ongoing process no matter how long you stay, visit, or, or commit to astrological benefits. It's intense. It's just intense. There's always something to learn. But where you have Scorpio, where the house of Scorpio is, and where the rim, the realm, the regions of Aries are, in all of our horoscopes, regardless of our sun, moon, or rising sign, and yes, that's a component of it, but if you know nothing but just my birth date is, and you go look that up on AstroSeek or all these different sites that will just, you know, free natal chart apps or whatever, learn what of the 12 houses, where you have Scorpio and where you have Aries, because that's the action over the next couple of months. That's the big action. So on yesterday, yesterday, we had the third and final pass in 2020 of the Jupiter-Pluto alignment. Jupiter is, is moved ahead now. We've had Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter in the oligarchy sign, the, the governments and, the, and the, the ruling elitist versus we the people. We the people are more Uranus and Aquarius and Capricorn's more to do with who's wanting to push the buttons of when the repair guy comes out from AT&T or, you know, when you, how you get beyond the rules and the regulations of, of Big Brother watching you and, and people saying, no, you don't get to do that. It's not your turn. It's an odd or even. It's not your turn. So you don't get to pass go. You don't get to collect $200 type of a thing. So it's got to do with people pushing back the, the very aware people or the very scared people. And they're either trying to corral them in like sheep, you know, and get people to be the sheeple and do as I say, or there'll be consequences. Do as I say, or you'd be put on a list. Do as I say, or you're not going to like the outcome. We'll punish you. We'll charge you. We'll fine you. Things will get delayed. That's when Capricorn goes to shadow side in the tarot cards. It's the number 15 card. And in some decks, it's called the devil. And in some decks, it's called materialism. But either way, it has a lot to do with in this earthly realm when we battle against forces of light or dark and it comes to making a choice and choice is always net consequences. If we get lured, if we get tempted, if we, if we get greedy, if we get maniacal, if, if we have, you know, malevolent intent towards someone, there's always that comes back to you threefold type of a thing. So there's people that have become so shut down 
because of their wounds and their trauma, shadow side of Capricorn, shadow side of Scorpio, that they're out there being the perpetrators of darkness as well. So I always urge people to pay very, very close attention and rely on your instinct, your gut level instincts and your intuition right now, because that is your discernment tool. And you need that very strongly until we get to the November 21st, 22nd shift of this year into Sagittarius. It starts to lighten up a little bit then. So yesterday with this Pluto-Jupiter conjunction, that happens once every 12 and a half to 13 years. So they came together. Now, Jupiter expands things. So the Capricorn area of our chart now is beginning to lighten up a little bit. It was at its most intense in January and in April and in late June, and this is that final pass. So it's like whatever has been thrown at us or whatever has thrown us backwards, we're beginning really to see even if we were wrong about certain things or we put our foot in the water and we needed to pull our foot back out because we either weren't ready or we needed to get some more details in the craziness of this year, even when we're wrong, we can learn. How was I wrong? What did I miss? How can I improve it? How can I take responsibility for that? A lot of people don't do that in the political realm. How can I take responsibility for my actions, rise above it, and be a better version of myself? That's the higher side of Capricorn. It's certainly the transformative, transmutational side of Scorpio, because the shadow side of Scorpio is everything demonic. It's Pluto, the lord of the underworld that just takes and snatches and doesn't care about any of the consequences because it's like, hi, I made my choice to be into darkness, so here I go. It's vampirical, and it's, and it's greedy, and it's scary, and it's sneaky. So where we all hold Scorpio in our birth chart, in our earth birth chart, in our natal chart, is where we're beginning to have a lot of illuminations right now. So what are those secret temptations? What are those secret addictions? And what are those hotly felt desires? Mars is turning around direct in his favorite harbor. So Mars is going forward in Aries. And when Mars goes forward in Aries, it's been retrograde since September 9th. So when Mars, our drive, our chutzpah, our energy to go forward, our impatience and our ability to say, oh, God, I've got to try something. This is just crazy. I can't, I can't be locked up anymore. So we started to really get agitated about any putting, anybody putting any more rules on us back in early September. And we weren't really thinking so much about the election. Then we just were so happy to go out again. So in some states have been locked down more than others, some countries. So we internalized any of those fears or those frustrations, or those desires. So we internalized those, and then the battleground became within us. So Mars turning direct on this Friday the 13th, Mars is the action, and Aries says, oh God, just go. Just start something. Stop doing everything just the same way, and and for God's sakes, look at what's not working, and let it go. The Scorpio part of it is saying, bury it. Just Walk away. And it doesn't mean you have to walk away from a person that you've had conflict with. It doesn't mean you just have to walk out of the job. Perhaps that was taken away from you. A lot of people have had that. A lot of people are hunkering down in less than satisfactory partnerships because they're they're now terrified of what other changes are going to come upon them. It's like people are trying to grasp onto something familiar, something habitual, because there's been so much that's thrown on our face that isn't the same way as it was at the end of 2019. So it's a high cycle of desires. It can be very a very sensual, very transformative type of, of uh, cycle. There's a lot of firepower. And the people that are walking around with the third realm of the cardinal signs, this is all happening when we get this Jupiter-Pluto thing. It's all happening at like 22, 23 degrees of Aries. And we've got we've got Eris, you know, that has a lot to do with the 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 female, the the yin power that's wanting to come out. That's genderless. Yin yang don't have to have a gender assignment. If I say masculine, feminine, I'm not referring to gender on this. I'm I'm talking about energy expressions. So where yin is more of magnetic and drawing in, the the yang is more electrical and it's more of a thrusting outward. So right now Mars is very yang. Venus 
is in Libra. She's in her home sign, getting ready to go into Scorpio soon. And as Mars turns around in Aries, and he's happy there. He's going to oppose Venus, and she's happy being in Libra. And normally, Mars and Venus are pretty happy to hang out together. But Venus is saying, I want some sweetness in my life. I, I don't want just the sexual everything and the intensity of that. That's great at the right time, right moment. But I really need us to get in sync. We've both had crazy years. It's time that we, we need to talk about, you know, what it is that we're having a hard time communicating because Mercury went direct around the election time and it went direct. It's been hanging out a long time in Scorpio. Now it's back in Scorpio. And so another layer, which is, this is also intense. So I'm not going to get too technical. Mercury, which has everything to do with the written, the spoken the communicated over the airwaves in the mail. Think about the ballot issue. Think about the machines versus the ballots, where the communications are going sideways. The phone company is going down. YouTube going down. Your, your site, you said, crashing in the middle of your interview with your guest last night. It's just like all of a sudden, there's like this little menacing thing that comes along and says, I'm pulling the plug on you. I don't, you've gotten used to the internet. and You've gotten used to the the connected web and watch this all of a sudden there can be a little mini EMP attack and it's over. What are you going to do now? And so how do we process that level of frustration? So Mercury and Scorpio is now opposing Uranus and Taurus. So we're all going through our own personal, all right, I'm not going to let, you know, I'm a light worker. I'm, I'm into magic. I'm, I, I believe in my sacred divine source. I am not going to let, the forces that could drain me, the energies that could be taking my beautiful, precious life energy with earthly, inane matters. You know, get over it if, you're, if one of your phone lines went down. Just work to fix it. Maybe it's a higher message from spirit. Maybe you're being targeted. Maybe you're on the new list. Maybe there's stuff going on, which I know there is psychically. I know there is. I've been saying for seven months, there's so much going on above our heads, the space force, the satellites, the... We just launched a rocket today from Cape Canaveral. It's a big spy satellite. Boom, there it goes. You know, So there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and there's a lot of cyber spying algorithms. There's a lot of uh, shifting of the guard, so to speak. So like one faction is trying to come in and take power. Let's just use a, a, an innocuous example. Let's say China's playing harder now and Korea's playing harder now than maybe Russia or maybe other Israel or Russia versus, you know, China and Korea trying to come in and get into, you know, the, the great power of the world, as they say, the United States of America and our Internet system, because they've talked about that the last several elections that I can remember. And this Mercury faux pas went back to the Al Gore Clinton election. So and then we have the United States going through its first ever Pluto return. That only happens like every 248 years. So there's like stuff going on with the two candidates in their charts. There's stuff going on with the actual United States chart that hasn't happened yet since our beginning. And here it comes and it'll be in effect to July 12th of 2022. We'll talk about that more toward the end of the year. So here's the big, here's the big um, key that unlocks you. With all of the stuff that's going on, yes, it's intense, but we have to micromanage it. And however you connect to the creator, close your eyes and just breathe in. You know, however we can take that, that empowerment pause, as I call it, and just connect for a moment before we go to break, before we take your calls. I want to just call blessings upon the Fringe FM. Our, our producer and director and, and co-owner and, and creative impetus of all this, Joe Rook, all the hosts, all your shows, and your chat rooms, your personal lives. Let's all just close our eyes for one very poignant moment and just allow that golden light to be what's mirroring back into our third eyes, what's radiating around our heart center, our heart chakra. Feel it in the soles of your feet as your feet are placed on the earth somewhere, somehow, even laying in your bed or at the chair, you know, on the carpet or the tile of the earth, know that the stars are lining up, to, they're lining up and lighting up any darkness that's in your life right now. And in this moment, 
with our intention, we invoke and we intend that no matter what tries to come and orbit around us and the external manifestation of all of this of 2020, in this moment, I discern, I declare, I summon, I allow, and I receive the prosperous blessings of light and harmony in the all that is, the what is, aho, amen. So be it. Uh So we have to, regardless of what the numbers are saying and the colors and the people that that we think are, are pro or con against us, we have to take responsibility for saying, if there's something negative out there, I am not going to indulge in that. I'm not going to invest my precious life force energy, the bounty of my spirit. I'm not going to let that distract me because negativity wants to distract and take some of your resources. So as, as antennas of light, as biochemical satellites, we have to now take a little bit more charge of our orbit. And that orbit, you know, thoughts are things. They're things. You know, they can be measured. Science is beginning to work with them in quantum fields. So our thoughts are radiations and illuminations. So we have to take responsibility of what we're self-talking and repeating and going into some kind of of mesmerized type of posturing. So I'm just asking each of you to give that a little second thought of no matter what seems to be coming at me and the external Scorpio's about if you'll start to take a look in the mirror within you, it's time to go into the innerverse, the inner you, and to go into those realms and layers. And it isn't like it was back in July when Joe and I were talking to you about mother-father issues. You know, your rising sign is often depicted as your inner child anyway. So your ascendant or your rising sign is how you can begin to help the inner child of you without the father mother issues or patterns or 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 trauma wounds old trauma wounds so what scorpio is saying to you is i'm i've just handed you a divining rod i've just handed you the ability to find the hidden water lines i've just handed you a magical alchemical wand most you know dowsing rods and divining rods are made from some type of specialty wood some of them in, in, in these mountains here, some of them do it in metal, some of them work with copper, but a lot of them in the olden days were sticks, certain types of bark and wood. So Scorpio is saying to you, what magical tools, what magical sacred techniques might you now focus on and employ to get yourself out of getting locked down within your own self? It's one thing if the government tries to lock us down, the governors, and try to interfere with our restaurant visits and our amount of times we can go to the store and mask bullying and all of that that came upon us rather forcefully and quickly this year. Maybe it's that we needed the symbol of the mask to show us, what have I been hiding behind? What have I been afraid to show? So Scorpio is mask off. Scorpio is like, okay, I may have to right now in this societal thing, reset, that I may have to wear a mask sometimes or I'm going to be denied oligarchy rules again, entry or the ability to shop there. It's gotten, you know, to where it's now they're doing the psychological hypnosis. And, you know, if you're, if you're a good person, you're wearing it not just for yourself, but for other people. And maybe a part of that's true. I mean, it's all crazy out there. But Scorpio is about look at the external symbols of rules and regulations about reminding us to wash our hands and to do, you know, distancing and and to wear a mask of some kind, find a choice, do it, but find the clarity and all of that and take it in a psychic sense as a big symbol, like a living tarot card, a, a living, you know, like actual new symbol in our life. There's a pushback on us looking at how we feel about wearing a mask. So a lot of people wear societal masks. A lot of people are afraid of their vulnerability being shown. And so they have a social mask that they put on when they go to work or they don't want the partner to really see their flaws. So they're afraid of showing their flaws or they're afraid if they risk their vulnerability that they'll get abandoned or rejection. That's the type of mask of, no, I'm not ready to talk about that. No, I'm not ready to push that point. I've got to make sure I respect their boundaries. So there's all this kind of stuff that to me is so obvious 
that's being thrown at us literally on our face at face value that we need to face. That's Aries. Aries rules the head and the face and the obvious five senses. And it also has a lot to do with our sexuality and how we can monitor and manage what makes us hot with our temper, with our sexuality, with our impatience, with our need to be in road rage or to go first or push back on anybody telling us what to do and certainly when to do it. So when you get Scorpio and you get Aries together, let's turn that. We got to alchemize that. You know, Scorpio can be destructive, the assassin, the sniper, the detective, you know, the the one person that's able to dig deep enough to solve the cold case murders. You know, when you watch these shows on TV about, you know, they, the, the criminal was really a mastermind. They really thought they got away with it, you know? And then all of a sudden there's that one person that goes, yeah, I'm here to give you your karma today. The karmic sheriff just showed up in town, bitch. So Scorpio's really good with that karmic boomerang as well. So it's, it's about what, where do we feel slighted? Where do we get tempted to seek revenge or payback? Are we keeping our envy in check? Are we keeping our jealousy at someone else's success or someone else's ability to push beyond how they can, as they say, shoot themselves in their own foot? You know, we know if we're being lazy. We know if we're being pushy. We know if we're being a bully. And we know if we are afraid. So Scorpio says to you, if you'll just learn from the pain, if you'll just adapt, consider a new tool or technique toward that next layer, level, of the better version of yourself. Scorpio is also about the the complete alchemizing of of your beingness. So it's where you can incorporate uh, the Holy Trinity. Uh, You can actually speak and have divine communion with your guardian angels and the archangels and your dream symbols will become more rich. You'll literally be taken and guided you know, for a lot of people, it's galactic frequencies or their star tribe. So all of this is only going to intensify because guess what? This new moon opens up the portal of the last day of this month. That's a lunar eclipse in Gemini. So we've got the Aries and the Scorpio and the Capricorn, but then it's going to start to shift in the third week of November when we get to that that Sagittarius shift, the North Nodes in Gemini. So this is the first big full moon in the 18-month cycle of the nodal shift of our path ahead, our path to discovery and adventure, now being the Gemini area of our chart. And in in Upanishads and in Hinduism, it's, it's called the Dharma, the work to be done now for the elevation of the soul. Karma is the other type of thing, you know, the return on your investment or your or your debit. But the Dharma is the soul's current work. So the North Node in Gemini, the Gemini part of our our star chart is saying, embrace it. Think about it differently. Look at it differently. Apply some new techniques. Get creative with your skill sets. And so Gemini is fabulous for learning. It's fabulous for deleting. It's fabulous for emptying our recycle bins and upgrading our programming. And that's coming November 30th. So, I mean, there's so much I just have to stop. There's just so much. All right. <laughs> well, are you, I know, like, are you, that is pretty intense. Um, do you want to go through no, the wanna, signs? Wanna, or? Sure. Yeah, I want to just do some, I want to do a little shift. You know, Joe, I'm always telling you, you know, because we've been together this lifetime a little while, I like to shake it up and do a little bit for each sign. Certainly, if they don't get to call in. So what my guides told me to do, they told me to start with Aries and to work with some cards, like first give a card and then give a theme. And I'm like, okay. So for Aries, the card that you get is the Gemini card known as the lovers and the major trumps and the major triumphs. So you're, you've been working with duality issues, Mars turning direct in your own sign on this Friday, the 13th, 2020 is giving you some fresh, bright, intuitive perspectives. And it's it's about saying to you, Aries is the self, it's I am. So if you're an Aries and you're getting the lover's card, which is partnership issues and intimate dynamics, it's telling you, am I really being a soulmate to myself? Am I treating my own self 
the way I would want to treat my soulmate or my soulmate to treat me? Am I showing up and being good enough to myself and realizing my own worthiness? If not, how can I expect anybody else to do that? There's a duality. So, you know, with Gemini, you know, it's like there's the, the two sides, you know, the two sides of the whole thing. So for Aries, they've been looking at both sides of an equation, but you've also got to look within. That's another dynamic, not just looking out. That's one direction, but you've got to look in. And I feel with Aries, for them, they've got to look within themselves and say, this is what I know that I love in romance. This is what I know that I love about myself as a lover. And where might there be a deficit? Where might I be not standing up for that part of me that deserves to have that quality, that commitment, that that creativity? You know, like when, I, when I'm with somebody, I want to invest in listening about their dreams and their desires, and I, and I want to do deep listening, and I want to appreciate that. We've also got to listen to your own self. So if you're in Aries right now and you get the lover's card, it's about, sure, romance is, is got a fresh energy to it. And now that Mars has turned direct, a lot of the glitches that started to happen uh, in any kind of intimacy lockdown or, or, you know, like, what's going on? You know, why did all the energy go sideways? Yeah, welcome to 2020. So in early September, that started getting more internalized. And now with Mars turning around to direct, it's like, I need to stand up for myself. If I, I have a right to love myself and to be loved the way I know that I'm certainly willing to give out. So for Aries, I would say, are you being a soulmate to yourself? When you start to love yourself and be a soulmate to yourself, that's going to attract those frequencies into your life. Absolutely. Even with a current partner, even if you're married, it'll shift that whole energy in your existing intimacies and also in the ones that you hope if, you, if you're divorced or you're single, it also can turn it around to where someone finally sees, oh, my God, I'm, I've really been missing all that you are. And sometimes we have to let people miss us. Sometimes it's good to separate so that you can show them, now I'm not as available in your life. Let's look at how that feels. So you don't do it as revenge or punishment. That's the shadow side of Scorpio or Capricorn. So we don't want to do that. So I would say that the dynamic for Aries only gets better as we start getting to the Sagittarian shifts and particularly there's a, there's a date that comes up on the 23rd of November and also on December 10th, it's just magic for the fire sign. So that's a really good time to invest in yourself and stand up for yourself, whether that's financial, personal, or in your spirit seeking. So if you're a Taurus, the card that you got is the zero, the fool card. And I see that kind of like our soul that starts the adventure of this earth life, you know, and our soul that goes out of body in our soul that seeks what goes on after the experience that in this language we call death and all the little deaths that we have in this life, all the divorces and all the kids growing up and all the empty nesters. And when they go off to college and when they get married, those are little deaths. If you have a kid, those are little deaths and you know, the different phases and decades that we, we have with our parents or our siblings or our mates who we've, who, who we've left and who we clinged to and who left us. So if you're Taurus, it's like the fool and the wise man, the fool and the wise man. So the way that the stars are lining up for you right now is Scorpio is the polarity sign to Taurus. So it's like trust issues for Taurus. There's a reset button on what can I rely on and what can I trust? A lot of Taurus clients I've been talking to feel like they're in a risky time because they're having like all kinds of things go on. Oh my God, the, I, this unexpected expense. I got to get a roof. I got to go over here. I got to fix this on the car. You know, so there's like odd little things coming up and that kind of skits the earth signs out. If you're a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and unexpected expenses come up, that gets that sign's attention more. I mean, the money thing, it's the stability in the material world can, can grab a, an earth sign by the nads quicker than any of the other signs. It starts like, oh, wait, my world's got to stop, got to reroute got to reprogram, got to get a little OCD about my finances and my budget. So risk-taking and being spontaneous about repairing something in your life right now, if you're a Taurus, is a new walkabout, is a new adventure. So for Taurus, I'd say the example I want to give you is there's this really big battleship and it's got to turn around in the depths of the ocean. It's slow for that ship to completely turn around and do a 180. If you're a Gemini, 
Um, what's going on with you right now is you did get the card for Capricorn. You did get the whole materialistic type of dance. You did get the temptation card. You know, it's the 15th card in the major Trump. So in a lot of decks, it's called the devil and other decks. They try to soften that and make you realize, is it sex or money that seems to be addicting you? Or is it leading you into the pain of addiction of drugs or addiction of alcohol or addiction to porn or addiction to a person or or are they addicted to you? And you're going, oh, my God, that's so intense. They're too needy. They're too vulnerable. I can't, I can't fix them. They've got to fix them. So for Gemini right now, it's like they're, they're facing their own demons. That's a good way to say it. Um, they're checking in on their own fears, their own temptations, um, confronting uh, their shadows, because we can learn from the darkness. We can learn from the dark night of the soul. If we turn and say, stop haunting me. You've followed me long enough in my life, so you and I are going to have a face-off. So when we get the dark night of the soul cycles in our life, know that it's just another teacher. So take the, the power of it off and just let it, it's like you're entering another class. Like instead of math, it's English, and you're going to learn from that English teacher about your shadows. So you might need some new tools and techniques, the therapist, the life coach, the oracle reading, the astrological reading doing some magic yourself, getting out in nature. You're going to have to up your game when you get into a temptation materialism cycle. So if you're a Gemini right now, your normal go-to coping strategy is to multitask and run and stay too busy. No. The North Node is in your sign. Got to face it. And guess what? The only Gemini full moon of this year, which can lead to creative new skills, is coming up over the 29th and 30th of November. So, Gemini, listen, pay attention to this. The moon is going to light you up at the end of the month, and I'm liking it. If you're a Cancer moon child, you got the Empress. So this is great family building, home building, like nesting, the maternal thing, the rising up of the female factor. You're very fertile and creative with projects that you're wanting to address, women's group women allies, women friends. Um, there's a new birth really going on if you're under cancer the crab, um, especially as you get past the active part of this month of this weekend. I mean, this weekend is very intense, and we've got Mercury opposing Uranus out of Scorpio Taurus over the 17th of November. So I, I feel like this, once we get into that third week of November and Venus gets into Scorpio on the 21st, of November, then we start to see the water signs breathing a sigh of relief. But it's not it's not easy peasy for any of the 12 signs this month. We are in probably as intense of a month right now as we were when everything started to be a surprise, surprise, surprise in mid-January. So again, for if you're Cancer the Crab, either your own mothers, your own females in your life, there's a queen type of energy. There's that that yin frequency. So I would say maybe get out under the moon, do some night magic, do some dream work, get that notepad by your bed so you can start to jot down a few bullet points about your dreams. If you're a Leo, you've got the judgment card. And the way I studied it, it's Archangel Gabriel. It's galvanizing. In Egypt, it's the sky goddess Nuit. And she, she consumes and gives birth to Ra each morning. So it's got a lot to do with above your head, things that are above the scale, so angelic divination, um, being out under the sky, whether it's the stars or the sun or the winds, there's a resurrection energy that's around you, Leo, and you may, some of you Leos may have gone to the edge of death, the death of the relationship, the death of living in a certain city or the death of a job or literally someone in your lot saving an animal, saving a person, getting taken, them taken care of in the nick of time type of a thing. It's got a lot to do with what has to shift. There's no guesswork on it anymore. It's resurrection. In order to resurrect, you have to let slip out of the old skin. So you're rising back up if you're a Leo, but trust me, I know that it's been intense. If you're Virgo, it's the justice card. So you're rebuking, you're rebuking what's been a detriment in your past. You're you're you've got a couple of attorneys, you've got a couple of barristers arguing each side of things. And so if you're a Virgo, you're trying to look at all sides of the situation, but are you in balance? Are you feeling organized? Where are you in this whole tug of war right now? So it's, it's, it's your 
progress cycle when you get the justice card, which in my deck's 11, when you get that justice card, it's, it's, it's like you're rebuilding something. You're, it's an earth sign, and you're trying to rebuild a new structure. Now, Virgo's pretty good at coping with crisis. I mean, they, they just go straight into the, the mental job of being a soldier with boots on the ground and, okay, stop your bitching. Right now, we've got to get resolution. So I feel like it's a good month for Virgo with the Scorpio energies assisting them. If you're Libra, you got a wild card. <laughs> you got kind of like the closest thing I could describe would be like the tower in a sense that you're, you're coming into summoning your guardian angels. It's like in astrology, the, the, the sacred finger of fate, you know, the yod type of a thing. You have supernatural forces, if you're a Libra, that can come to your assistance. So whether you're into the ruins or whether you're into the animal totem messengers, whether you're into taking solitary time to do past life regressions or sound healing, this is that time until you get to the the full moon of Gemini. This is that time. And that that full moon favors you. And I want to say to Libra that Scorpio is your financial sign in your solar chart. If you've got a Libra rising, Scorpio is going to start to have you both look at where you crash and burn with your spending or your financial habits and where you're just saying, that's it. That's enough. So if you're a Libra rising or a Libra sun sign, you're like, listen, I'm, I know where I'm, I'm getting in my own way. I know where I'm doing shopping or spending to where I'm trying to nurture and self-soothe. So Libras are going to be able to overcome a financial block. If you're Scorpio, happy birthday, happy birthday. And man, you got number 19. You got the sun. So the sun is an excellent card in the major uh, trumps of the tarot. And it has a lot to do with getting in touch with your center of play. There's an effervescence cycle around you, Scorpio, so embrace the beauty. I'm not spending a long time on you because you got a really good card, and it's your birthday. So it's the start of your new year, so good on you. If you're a Sagittarius, Wheel of Fortune. So as a Sagittarian, you're in your solar 12th house, so it's like that song by Miley Cyrus, I came in like a wrecking ball. So Sagittarius is ready to shake things up. They like being jovial. They like learning. They like teaching. They're speed demons. They just like they want to get there. They want to get involved, and they want to thrust themselves into the experience. And so that, they're the archers, you know, with the arrow. So I feel like that this month only gets more active, but there's that little piece right now and next week, especially next week, where you need to attend to you, your hygiene, your health. How are you addressing that holistically and spiritually? If you're Capricorn, you got the moon. So it's all the feels. You're restructuring your entire emotional lifestyle choices and you're overcoming challenges of a deep psychological feeling level. So your feelings are your teachers. So I'm just going to leave Capricorn with this. If you'll let yourself feel it, then you can heal it. If you're an Aquarius, the shock and awe of the chaos of change, it's a revelation cycle for you. I feel like that you have the strength card, so we have that lion energy, which is a polarity for you. You're adjusting as an Aquarian to the new normal. All this Capricorn has been in your solar 12th house, but you're bursting forth because the really exciting thing that comes up besides the next two eclipses on November 30th and December 14th is that as an Aquarian, Jupiter is going into your sign, and Jupiter is going to meet up with Saturn at Yuletide, at winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere here. So Aquarians really going to up their game. Aquarius is going to be the dominant sign of 2021, Aquarius and Taurus. There's going to be that dance going on in 2021. So for Aquarians, with the North Node in Gemini, that favors you, so the challenges are less for you. So just swim through the chaos and find your shore. It may be that you're alone on the island for a while, but Aquarius knows how to be alone and make it happen. And the final one, Pisces, you've got the Hermit, which is normally a Virgo card. It's a nine. So there's a bit of an isolation or withdrawing period that's going around the water sign of Pisces. The Virgo energies like structuring, going through your closets, you know, getting rid of clutter in your home can actually be cathartic and metamorphic. If you're a Pisces, instead of being a hoarder, start letting it go and it'll help you if you give it to other people, give it new life by letting it go from you. I do see new hope. I do see light at the end of the tunnel, but I feel like with the Pisces, you've got to use your time to study something of the natural healing arts, 
holistic approaches to your wellness, stop the victim, poor me scenarios. Sometimes Pisces, you know, they throw themselves into the hospital or they run from doctor to doctor, getting yet another prescription to try to become comfortably numb because external life, earth life can be pretty intense if you're a Pisces, but that's why you want to go back into the spiritual realm. And that's why Pisces make really good singers and dancers and actors and performers because they get to go into the fantasy and probably strippers and prostitutes too. So it has a lot to do with, I'm going to go into my fantasy world. I'm going to slip on this costume or this mask because life and reality as they say I'm supposed to function is very hard for me. So that's where Pisces kind of meld more into their partners or their families and get lost in other people's personalities. So I'll say this. We'll close the month with this full moon in Gemini before we go to break. So how can you get better thought patterns and and become more aware and cognizant of the type of – look at your thoughts as like spears or arrows that you're throwing or these axes that people throw to try to, you know, if it's new things where you go and you throw an ax and try to hit the the bullseye and and the bars, the bars you're allowed to go into, that is. So look at the fact that you're, we're all archers right now and we've got our arrows are full and our little quivers and we're about to become Robin Hood and his married men. That's a Sagittarian archetype. So we're about to become the rebel in the Nottingham forest and we're about to find very covert ways not to let the government tell us what to do, what to wipe, and when to do it. And so we're going more stealth mode. So Scorpio is preparing us on how we're going to be intent on being under the radar. This is not, let me repeat it, this is not the time for you to take to the streets, get in the protest, and start getting your temper messed with because you may be a very peaceful person, but if you don't think you won't get triggered on whatever side of the protests that are going to be, you might be a peaceful light warrior and someone just comes up and sucker punches you and trust me, they'll probably react. Whether you run away or you engage. So let's work with our psychic, alchemical, heart center, third eye, crown chakra stuff. Let's all take the responsibility of calling in peace in this divisive environment and calling in wellness for every single innocent, thriving, living creature at this time. That's the message of Scorpio. Well, there it is. There, there is your report, your Astrological Cosmic Conditions report. When we come back from this short break, uh, we got a special report during the break as well. Uh, we're going to take your calls. 1-800-588-0335. First come, first serve. We'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up. Stay with us. is not the time to fear when your immune system is strong shields up you have very little worries if your immune system is compromised you're susceptible to all viruses i say shields up and no fear try heart love from get the tea.com heart love has a special ingredient called allicin it comes from the healing part of the garlic plant no garlic breath no garlic leaking out your pores, just pure immune building ingredients that gets your shields up. Heart Love is a unique blend of herbs that loves to build you up. Google garlic and know the benefits. One Heart Love pill is equal to 20 cloves of garlic. 20 cloves. Shields up. You've heard of our life change cleansing tea at getthetea.com. Now try Heart Love. And by the way, take your blood pressure and watch weekly what happens. So here's how to purchase. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com and build your shields. That's getthetea.com. Mention Ray in the coupon code and hit apply so and receive free talk shipping. Radio. Then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google 
Play or the iTunes App Store. I'm Ryan Gable, and I want to remind you to keep your radio, phone, tablet, or computer tuned to The Fringe FM and visit the website, thefringe.fm, to listen to the entire lineup of shows. You can also catch my broadcast, The Secret Teachings, Monday through Friday, beginning at 12 a.m. midnight U.S. Pacific Time, right here on The Fringe FM. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. Will headphones become a thing of the past? According to the Associated Press, the technology uses a 3D sensing module and locates and tracks the ear's position, sending audio via ultrasonic waves to create sound pockets by the user's ear. Sound can be heard in stereo or a 3D mode, which creates a 360-degree sound bubble around the listener. CEO Christoph Romstein explains the new Nevetto technology. And then I was thinking, yeah, but is, is it the same as headphones? No, because I have the freedom. You know, it's like I have the freedom of being what I want to do, and I have the sounds playing in my head as there would be something happening here which is difficult to explain because we have no reference for that. So soon you can have speakers that only you can hear. Interesting. Scientists have found a way to make infrared light visible to humans. Commonly referred to as IR, paranormal investigators have been using the similar type of technology to spot spirits and light anomalies, the theory being that certain energies are only visible on the infrared spectrum of light. Researchers have been able to develop a cheap and efficient technology that could mount on a standard camera and allows the conversion of photon light from the entire mid-infrared region to the visible region and can be picked up by the human eye and the standard camera. And I bet you can pick up all kinds of paranormal activity with that new lens. In asteroid updates, scientists can't rule out that giant asteroid Apophis could impact the Earth in 2068. The asteroid is estimated to be over a thousand feet in size, similar in size to an Eiffel Tower flying through space. Scientists are working on ways to deal with the potentially hazardous asteroids. NASA's DART mission will demonstrate a method that involves crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid's moon in order to nudge it. And if that works, the concept could be used to push threatening asteroids into a safer path. But we do have time until 2068. After seven years, Paranormal Activity will be back with a new film. Writer Christopher Landon has been working on a new script, which does not yet have a title, though the film is slated for release on March 4th of 2022. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. All right, so I want to do the special announcement real quick since we are announcing the official release of the altar box here with um, the guy that actually made this thing with his hands, Brett, the host of, some of you may know him, host, host of the Esoteric Scholar. He also has a store called MyStarsAndPlanets.com, which uh, there's some of the coolest stuff you'll ever see at that store. And uh, I contacted Brett, actually contacted me about uh, his store when I saw it. He's got these really cool um they're like they're glass you can get your personal astrology and glass and color but we could we'll present those to you too like and i'll let him present those to you too we'll put those up on the website but i really wanted to introduce you to the guy that actually partnered with me and made this and made this with his hands and i don't know how long we've been uh, making this but brett thanks for coming on and talking about this just real quick yeah you're welcome thank you for having me yeah, how when how long ago did we actually it's it's been a minute since we've been working on this thing, hasn't it? It's been a few months. It's probably been about three three months now since we started uh, discussing it and started to work out the, the plans and drafting the idea out and building prototypes. 
Yeah, and I was talking to Mary during the break, and she's right. This is like a one of a kind uh, piece for. It, it reminds me of if like if you want to be do anything, do any type of spiritual practice, ritual, scry, sigil work. If you're a traveling gypsy, or if you're an exorcist, if you're like one of those Constantine type people, you need this thing, man. This thing is the real deal. You know, it's not like the old uh vampire kids like this is uh, just an altar box a traveling case for any spiritual practice that you want to do um and uh, just tell them real quick how, how you made it and how you reinforced it because i think that's really cool yeah so essentially how it's going to be assembled and put together is i mean every, everything is handcrafted and the wood uh, for it is walnut and i actually go down to the the local mill and hand pick all the wood um kind of making sure I get the best quality grain and everything and, and what energies of that would actually come out to me of, of what wants to be taken home, so to speak. And then everything gets milled down and, and cut, cut down into shapes and sizes and stuff. And the compartments are all, you know, um, fabricated to different sizes. So you can store like your sigils and crystals, candles, different types of incense sticks and, and materials. You know, as um, as some of the pictures you see there, you can put your sensor in there or your your athame or, um, you know, any of your, your candle holders and stuff like that. And then that altar top that holds everything in place on the bottom is actually two sided. So you can use it as a cloth backed face to it. We kind of have a little soft top to it if you're working with more delicate things, um, more of an a, mm, elegant look to it. And then the hardwood top is a, is a maple, and it has the um, just kind of some geometry etched into it to give yourself an altar top that you can work out, um, put your candle holders and stuff on that. Um, so you can flip it back and forth, and it's removable. But what I think is really cool is the actual black mirror itself, because the first, the one side is the black mirror that you can utilize. And if you've done any type of evocation or anything like that, you know, skyring the black mirrors is dropping yourself into the void and kind of becoming one and getting that visual. But on the reverse side is something that I've been experimenting with for a little bit with um, having a chalkboard sigil where you can put your own, um, your own sigils and your own styles to it out of chalk and once again, if you've done this for a while, you know making some of the ritual chalk out of you know crushed eggshells and things of that nature and using it um, for these purposes can be very empowering. And so it gives you that opportunity to make your own sigils and, and work with um, that kind of experimentation, so to speak. And if you're, if you're in the Vudan or Hoodoo or anything like that, you know that that can play into um, that as well. Um, doing your own um, skyring through custom sigils on the chalkboard there. And then, you know, it's um, the hinges are reinforced with a leather strap on the back. So you can only limit it to go back so much. And it's tilted at just the angle that if you're seated in front of it, you should have a good view of that, uh, the black mirror or the, the chalkboard, um, which is removable. So if you wanted to mm -hmm. take it out and use the box at a higher level and put that somewhere else, that's perfectly um, possible with this as well. Yeah, the simplicity of it, what it's capable of, and, the, and it's handcrafted uh, by magicians too. And um, I can see Mary on the road traveling with one of these for sure, right? Can you see yourself <laughs> with it, Mary? <laughs> and, well, my favorite part of the story, besides all his eloquent descriptions of it, is it's like when people go into crystal shops like his, and they say, oh, that, that crystal spoke to me. See, I'm a girl that loves the trees. So when he talks about, you know, I go down to the mill and I go to the walnut and I go to the maple and I, and I pay attention to which ones want to come home. I'm mm -hmm. like, he had me there, right there. It's just like, yes, speaking to the tree spirit. Yes, 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 yes. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the alchemy starting right there. I'm going actually to the source. I'm going to the mill. And I'm feeling and speaking and walking with the spirit of the wood. Yeah, it's it's yep. perfect. It's perfect. And I, I really want to thank uh, you for doing this with me, Brett, too, because uh, I had this idea in my head, and I talked to a friend of mine about it uh, and uh, just never thought about, like, what could I do to get it done? 
and uh, really you came along at the right time and i think we're launching at the right time like mary said too so yeah man i really oh, appreciate it absolutely it's it's like a magic carpet it's magic on a it's magic a go-go magic a go-go yeah it's perfect all right i think it is for sure so and uh you know maybe uh mary since we're kicking this off before we take a call maybe you can pull i would love it if you pulled a card before the altar box for us well let me surprise you and brett with this in the scorpio you know i'm always doing something different my guides had told me like they do in europe they have a thing where they do like metal charms okay so they not only think about picking an oracle card or when i used to write messages on seashells underneath the seashells when i would do that as an oracle in florida they had me order 300 pieces of charms so these are all kinds of shapes and symbols so think of a sigil that would take the the shape of an artistic form. So I'm going to pick both a charm for you guys and the Magic A Go Go uh, magical box to go. It's like a magic carpet. I probably would name mine Merlin. But anyway, so I'm going to pick a charm. They must be named. They must be named. And then I'm going to pick a card. So both of you close your eyes. Magic A Go Go Merlin's box. Okay. Okay. The charm that I got, this will make sense to you too, is the Wise Owl. I'll mail it to you, Joe. Now, some of these charms are silver-toned, intuitive, and some of them have the tone of gold. So we're talking about active and intuitive. So you got the golden owl. So the owl came up, and these aren't all animals. These are like all kinds of shapes and symbols. So the owl, the wise owl, and what's known as the flying tiger of the night. A lot of people look at the wise owl. A lot of people know that the owl is the... The reason they call it the tiger of the night is because when the owl flies and when the owl's hunting, its wings make no sound. So that's why it's known as, you know, it's got stealth mode, which certainly fits Scorpio also. And we think about Athena and her owl, you know, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Just watch how that plays out. And in autumn where I live in the in these smoky mountains, you hear the owls a lot, you know, this time of the year, you know, as soon as it begins to be between time, between daylight and and uh, sunset and then the tween time going toward twilight my favorite time of day you start to hear the, hear the owls and of course i answer okay and the card you got is the king of wands in this deck i'm doing morgan greer in this deck it's the it's the king of rods the way that i have come to dance with the tarot the suit of the wands the rods known as also the clubs when i'm reading regular cards is the season of autumn and it's also the element in the way I do it, I'm not saying I'm the only and the best, but the way I do it, it's the element of fire. So that's inspiration, aspiration, and aspiration and inspiration on the move, which certainly fits with Mars turning around in Aries tonight, right at midnight, you know, on the Eastern Standard Time zone. So you've got the owl and you've got the king of rods. It's created and fashioned by two strong males. So we have a king. So we have the young element going with this, but actually all the oracle and all the processing that you're making the compartments for can be very yin. Yeah, that's perfect. Because it's a, it's a carrier. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, it's perfect. And again, guys, go check it out at lottingthevoid.com forward slash altar box. And if you want to check out Brett's story, he's got some really cool stuff in there too. It's at mystarsandplanets.com. Brett. Uh, thanks. I mean, you're more than welcome to hang out while we take calls and listen to Mary, but thank you. I really just want to personally thank you for doing this with me. It means the world, man. Regardless of what happens, it's it was a big deal to me, you know. No, no, gratitude, thank you. I, I love making these things. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, uh, gratitude gratitude is your highest magic. So you, you've both just done a seal, a verbal and a heart chakra seal of gratitude. There you go. Fantastic. All right. So are we ready to take the calls? This is what everybody's been waiting for, right? I the am. Phone calls? We have charms, All right. charms and cards. Here we go. Let's see. 504 area code. You've been waiting a long time. You're on the air with Mary Ducina. Who are you speaking with? Hey, Joe. It's Dre. Eyes open. Hey, How Dre. Good, good. Um, Mary, I Happy. had a... Happy. If you could pull a card for me, uh, that'd be great. I checked my transit chart today, and it's kind of ridiculously aspecting all the things. Um, so some guidance from spirit would be lovely. Let me th- let me pick you a Scorpio season charm first, Dre. Right? Let me do that. Let's get your charm Ooh. first. Okay. Oh, you got a key. You got a silver key. 
So what's interesting on the silver key is that as I hold it, um, the the top of it almost has like the the uh, either some people might see a rose symbol, but I see like the the that triple knot in the Gaelic and the Celtic. You know, the, the, there's a name for that thing. It's, it's escaping me right now, but it's a key. Like so that. obviously keys. Thank you. Um, the keys unlock things. So you said I would like a card for some insights, but the silver key is now gifted to you as your oracle charm. And so obviously you are both the door and the lock and, and the, the answer as you go through the door, as you go into the new portal. So you're going into the new portal and the card that I get for you, wow, is the high priestess. So for me, the high priestess is full yin. She holds the sacred scroll on her lap and the Morgan rear deck, she's resting her actual feet, Pisces, on the crescent moon. Crescent moon might be a symbol for you. She is she is the keeper of secrets and yet she's the giver of answers and you got a key. <laughs> so, I mean, the scroll is gonna open up for you and the transits that you checked are actually, like if you were in school, they're, they're your different professors and teachers and hall monitors saying to you, okay, this is the course you need to pay attention to this semester. This is like your soul semester to pay attention in everything that has to do with drawing down the power of the moon, high priestess, the yin frequency, and everything to do with the magic that is already within your earth altar box. Wow. Because we are the chalice. We are the box. We are, like Joe and Brett have manifested this wooden creation with mirrors that we can go into deeper deeper dimensions and portals and carry our essential oils and everything with the magic of go-go. But what's happening is that this is, and she has in this um, in this particular deck, she's all done in the deepest, richest turquoise color you can imagine, almost a turquoise teal, like a blue teal. And the and the big veil behind her with the with the black and white columns is done in indigo ultraviolet blue. So these might be color sensations to work with with your breath or as you're going into the dream lodge. These might be colors that you find. I might get a scarf in those colors or a bath towel or something to where I can actually feel that and touch that and put that on my lap as I meditate wear it around my throat chakra if it's a scarf or a piece of, you know, uh, costume jewelry or something. But I feel like that Pisces energy is all over the place with you. I always see the the high priestess is Pisces energy and Neptune's there and Neptune's there. So you might check out the Pisces house in your chart if you know your chart well. And you might look at um, how the Scorpio is getting along with the, with the Neptune and Pisces right now. It's very happy with that. So no matter what in conflict in the Capricorn with the Aries and the Scorpio with Uranus and Taurus. Look at the, the, the gift. The gift is the Scorpio resonating, really resonating. This new moon is favored to the Capricorn and it's, it's in a dance. It's in a trance dance. Think of a belly dancer. Think of a whirling dervish. That's what's going on with Scorpio to Neptune and Pisces. All right. Hope you enjoyed Hope that. that. Yeah. I'm, I hope you enjoyed uh you're reading too. Let's go. Um, thanks for your call. Eyes open, Dre. Appreciate it. Let's go to 479 area code. There's two 479s, but uh, I guess it's going to be 479-325. Who are we speaking with? 479 area hey, code. There Joe. You go. Hey, Mary. Hey, who are we speaking this with? This is Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Hi, Bailey. Hey, I Happy just wanted Scorpio to say Newman. thank you guys. You want a card, or do you just want to, do you got a question for Mary? Well, I wanted to first off say um, that the owl energy has been coming to me a lot lately. And I had an opportunity of working with the wings and the feathers of an owl recently, twice actually wow. in the week. And so I really have resonated with a lot of your readings tonight and this magical go-go box, like I'm ready to dive deeper into that, but I would like a card. First, you have to get a charm. First, you have to have a charm. <laughs> I think I got this whole pile of these charms, Bailey, so you got to have a charm. Okay. And what is this one? Oh, you got the four-leaf clover. Nice. So perhaps that <laughs> resonates back, perhaps that resonates back to 
some type of elder's ancestry. Perhaps it has to do with um, that you'll go into more of the Fey Kingdom and the, some of the magical traditions and maybe some of the the um, respected wood of the, the Fey Kingdom, mm-hmm. the Gaelic, the Celtic, you know, the whole aspects of that. And, you know, I, when I think about the fairy magic, and I know one of your guests, uh, Joe Lisa Allen, does so well with the with the Fey Kingdom and all of that. I think she's a Capricorn. What's nice about it is that you get into a spirit of the illumination of play. You know, the Fey Kingdom can be, mm-hmm. you know, it, it can be it can be a little mischievous and and it's always sensuous. It's always sensuous, but it also has a lot to do with the the spirit of play that I see with like puppies and kittens and and <clears throat> baby creatures and children. You know that that part of the children that gets into the uh, the gleeful, the gleeful exuberance is what I see around you. Your card, you got the queen of wands, the queen of rods, and she holds the sunflower. And in, in most traditional tarot decks, the queen of wands or the queen of rods either has a black cat or she's got some kind of medicine totem from the feline kingdom. So it can be a lion, it can be the tiger, it can be the black panther when we get into the the Mayan culture, you know, the great jaguar type of energy. But I would say that this has to do with your coming into your own and whatever dark night of the soul might have been going on back in the summer months of this year. And when we go back to, Mm. when we go all the way back to May, when the full moon would have been in Scorpio, the Buddha moon, the Wiesak moon, now you've come six months ahead and it's like, I really did shed a skin. That really was an old me. I am truly unleashed. Thank you so much. That totally resonates. I think the last time I got to get through to you guys was in May when I was going through quite a dark wow. night of the soul and it was quite intense. And now I have landed back onto the earth and <laughs> your card was amazing. Thank you. All right. Thanks thank you. For thank call. you for all the, the gratitude you have. Thank you for acknowledging magic a go go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, Bailey. Thank you, you have a good star. one. Play safe now. Thank you so much. Down there in Arkansas, <clears throat> man, Thank I miss you. home, man. I really do sometimes. You know, like I miss good the crickets. Uh, let's see. The we have another <laughs> four seven nine. Wait, listen. Yeah, four seven nine. What is this? Two three one. You're on the air with Mary Ducino. Who we speaking with? It's Jessica. You're Gemini from the West, darling. How are you guys? Howdy, Jessica. You Gemini. want to marry to do a card, or you got a question? A uh, card. All right. <laughs> okay. First, first the charm, because we're launching the charms at the oh, yeah, charm. magical. Yeah. Sorry. New moon first, then you'll get okay. The first charm. Oh, you got the fleur de lis, which ties to France, <clears throat> and the fleur de lis is like, you know, to the, the Hebrews would say, like, hi, I'm, you know, the celebration to life. The the fleur de lis goes all the way back in Knights Templar and and, uh, the medieval and the Renaissance. So you might be thinking about, are you one of those gals that loves to, whenever you can, get to the Renaissance and the medieval festivals? And do you feel like this isn't just something I'm doing that's fun? I really feel home here. So it has, you know, you might, you know, when you watch jousting for the first time or when you went to a renaissance or a medieval maybe you wanted to be a part of that and say i want to i want a costume and i want to do that you know that's that's a cosplay i could get into so the florida lee so research that on the internet you know take it back to its legends and myths and and what why it was assigned and what what i'm feeling about is the french connection it may have it may have scottish it may have other i'm not as familiar with that symbol i just know what it is and i know that it's it's a crest and it's an emblem that is a very powerful talisman so there is a charm aspect to each one of these charms each one of them has like constellations a legend and a myth and and it opens up a very positive treasure trail talk about boxes it opens up the box so you're able to see the gold and the riches inside of it now you got the four of pentacles we're switching elements and we're switching suits four is the ability to look at all sides all four corners and the four of pentacles is either someone around you has been a little insecure or a little clingy or holding on to maybe the worried about the money or worried about the security on an earth materialistic financial type of way, or maybe it's like you were going to move and the, then the Corona Rona pandemic, you know, the weaponized virus got involved and you're just like, Oh my God, now freeze frame. 
you know, it's like that old song, freeze frame. So I feel like that yeah. it's been almost like, no, we need to conserve, but it's given us time to really know if we're done with this portal or vortex of where we're residing and do we want to redecorate here or do we want to look at the low mortgage rates and do we want to think about expanding or leaving? So I feel like that's going to be more set into motion by like March of next year, but I feel like it's in the back mm-hmm. of your mind and someone else's, but like now, like it has been. Mm-hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. And do you it's understand? Transition. So, yep. Okay. So, okay. So when we move, sometimes, sometimes the funds get a little tight, you know, in the material world because we spent some energy and money packing up and moving and getting to new the new place. So there's both excitement and a bit of weariness that comes with it. You know, there's sometimes there's weariness when we get stagnant somewhere and there's a different kind of tiredness that happens when we actually relocate. So you're look you're looking now for other spokes in your wheel to take it further and to do something that you know is going to be an add on for your investment of time and creative skills. I see you doing something. I see you being able to bring in some income with, with the talent that you already have, just as an aside on your reading. Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out, actually. And it, I've been having a lot of those moments, like, where people would just call it deja vu, but I, I know better. But the, I believe it's I've blooming. Been the, huh? I believe it's blooming, honey. Yeah. And I believe when you get to this most powerful full moon of the year, and Gemini, you know, you're coming into that now. This is the new moon. This is the seeds actually beginning to germinate and position and the blooming of it and anything that you need to rebuke or cast away from you will come up right before that moon is full on the 30th when it's waxing in Taurus. So get into the deep dive with yourself and just find something to get yourself busy with, uh, with your hands. Like, I don't care what you try to do for the first time, just do it, whether it's drawing or mandala study or or just do it, you know, uh, jewelry wrapping, whatever you could do, but get those hands busy, the hands and the shoulders, the respiratory system, Gemini, get yourself actively with an open-eyed meditation where you're working on something of a creative flair, singing, dancing, something, but get yourself physically involved. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, Thank you for calling. I say, I feel like uh, Alex Trebek. Good luck, and thank you for playing Jeopardy. All right. (laughs) Um, God bless him. God bless his journey. Did you see the video, by the way, um, that went out on YouTube of him cursing? Like I never saw that before in my life. Like Alex, no. there's a there's a viral YouTube video of him going around. Like when the camera cuts, like him just flipping out and cursing. It's funny though. It's not bad, but it's funny. Um, the Jeopardy well, guy. I think he was a cancer, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah Alex. I, th- I think he was born under the sign of cancer, so I'm sure he had some moods. I mean, that's an intense show. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, let's see. I have to look that up. Five, God bless this journey. 540 area code. You're on the air with Mary Decina. Who are you speaking with? Uh, yeah, Joe, it's Mike. Jordan, how are you? Hey, Mike. Um, I'm going to ask Mary tonight. Uh, I'm looking at education, hopefully for the coming year of next year. So she could pull a card on that and see what she saw for that. Absolutely. First, you get a charm. Because I am a Scorpio, and everybody's getting a charm message as well. You get it's like two for a two for one. Okay, ooh, you got this is interesting. You got a gold heart, but inside the heart is like you know how they draw the the map of the world. Because I'm seeing the continent of Africa, then I see South America and America. So obviously, there's something about GPS. Um, location, location, location. It's got to do with you maybe having more of a the education being something that's an out of the box type of uh, choice okay. for you that it's going to be that it's going to be something that ups your game as far as it's more of a global perspective like it wouldn't just be something that I would go learn in my region or my area although that might be you know where I actually am physically positioned but there's something about you drawing in a foreign element or other ways of learning from different cultures or a different cultural background on some of the student teachers type of the thing and or the course. You got the 10 of pentacles. So we're staying with pentacles, which are diamonds and regular cards. It's the earth element. 
And when you get into the upper numbers of the pentacles, you start pulling a Capricorn vibe. You start pulling that winter solstice, the Yule tide type of a thing. And the 10th sign is Capricorn. Mm-hmm. So I feel like there's, there's skill sets that you already have talent and tools and techniques and ability that you're going to be able to more easily embrace how you're going to go about adding to your education. I feel like it's um, like when someone does like with, with Brett doing the woodworking, like I'm going to go get that type of saw and that type of knife and that type of chisel. It's like you're going to be getting into the specifics, the real nitty gritty specifics of something that you want to embrace and educate and be empowered because of it. But the way my guides are talking about it, it will serve you for the rest of your days on this planet. I mean, I feel like that it's like, like astrology has been a friend of mine long time beyond this lifetime. And I'm so glad that I, I did discipline myself to stay with it as a companion, as a traveling companion, as a friend for over 30 years. Same thing with when I got into my first tarot deck, you know, years ago. So they don't own me. They're not my religion, but boy, are they good companions. So this is going to be something as far as a skill set and a knowledge that it's, it's a, more than just a tool of the trade. It empowers you in a multifaceted way. So, yeah, I'd okay. go for it. Absolutely, I'd go for it. I don't know. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, thanks for calling, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. You can always tell when Mary's spot on, too, because someone will laugh. Like, they'll they'll get, they'll get give that laugh like, oh, they know exactly what you're talking about, or you hit it, like, spot on. They just don't say anything. I call um, that, I, I call that the, the confirmation spirit giggle to where it's like their guides have been talking to them, too. You know, and mm-hmm. it's a confirmation, and they start giggling like a little child. A spirit giggle, yeah. Uh, let's see, 586 area code. You're on the air with Mary Ducina. Who are we speaking with? This is James, again. James Salcedo. What's up, brother? Yeah, not much. Just uh, thought I'd call and see what happens. I guess he wants a charm and a card. Thank you, James. Man. He's, what's, it's, the, it's the CC night. Charm and a card. Charm okay, and a card. So let me close my eyes. Charm and a card. Charming card. A charm and a card. Okay, let's see what you get. You probably hear these little metal things I'm moving around. Okay, now you got, oh, you got a cat. You've got the feline, and, but it's like, it's kind of like, it's silver. And the feline that you got is kind of like, it looks more like the Siamese breed of the cat. It's more like the exotic type of a cat. So I don't know the legend and the myth of that breed. I know that they're revered in Bali still. I know that we certainly know they were revered in Egypt, whether it's an animal that you resonate with or not. I would look up the legend and the creation and all the myths and magic surrounded with the Siamese cat and what that represents. There's so many like feral cats and different breeds of cats, but the cat is always, there's an aloofness to the cat medicine totem. And it has a lot to do with, and Siamese cats have a regal, quality about them i mean they are extra independent but when they come to you it's it's only a breed i've been around a a couple of times that i've rescued and they're different than any other cat that i've ever rescued and they when they want you they want you when they're done with you it's like i still love you but i'm over here don't bother me i mean they they sort of just pulling away or getting they'll bite you i mean it's just like i said no so maybe some of these are Scorpio. <laughs> They're kind of like, you know, black and white. You know, that's it. You know, so, and the card you got, though, another 10, you got a major uh, Trump card. You got the Wheel of Fortune. And so the Wheel of Fortune has kind of a Uranus energy to it. It's kind of like paranormal and supernatural and your guides wanting to usher in closer to you. Uh, your partic- maybe a changing of the guard as far as another add-on of an angelic worker working with you or another spirit guide or your dreams may actually feature someone that you had not had a message from before or comes in strong with a message that's actually in the summerland and the spirit world. But I feel like something is about to get active in your life because the wheel of fortune is not just the turning of the wheel like we study in astrology, the changing of the seasons and the changing of the signs. The wheel of fortune is like you're up, buddy. It's your turn. So something's going to propel you forward. It's kind of like a cosmic catapult. So are you ready? Have you feel like you've been stagnant and you're kind of like, I don't know exactly what to do, but I'm ready to bust a move because it's coming. Yeah. 
That's very interesting because I I have a cat. It's not Siamese, but I have a cat. But I also have had experiences with a ghost cat here before as well in my apartment. Ah. So that's interesting. Oh, that's and interesting. Um, I also just, you mentioned paranormal just real quick. I did launch a podca- podcast recently. And so and it's all about true ghost stories and all the paranormal stuff. So that's, that's very wow. interesting. Wow. Good for you. Good. Okay. Maybe your podcast visual or logo is start up, tell your story of the ghost cat. I feel like that's a familiar that wants to be hanging out with that podcast. So I don't know if that ghost cat had a name or the time in your life that it appeared uh, like the year or if, if, if it came to you and still comes to, cause a ghost cat can come to you anytime it wants to. And also the cat you have now, the color of it, the name that you chose for that cat. I feel like that that's potentially your podcast mascot and that cat that you have now can be visited by the ghost cat in good ways and it may be that you'll be busy doing your podcast and all of a sudden the cat lets you know the paranormal juices just went up in the room well it always does seem to to come and want attention when i'm doing interviews for this kind of stuff so that is funny too so it's going to get stronger um, it's going to get stronger i feel like those are strong those are strong totems and Follow the instinct of the cat's mood. If it likes the spirit energy in the room or if it doesn't, you know, shift your energies to more shielded and protected or like, okay, we're going to move on from this story because the cat, it's not like I'm picking charms. The cat's going to pick whether it likes you to stay with that story for a long time or not. And the cat can heal. You know, if you take, if you take callers on your podcast, it may be someone's telling you a story. And as you're petting that cat that you own, the vibrations are actually coming out and magnetically going over the, ethers and healing the person that has the the paranormal trauma like barbara works with them you know works with those type of energies to help people use a cat to divine that would be pretty cool huh that would be really cool yep yeah thanks yep. thanks for your call james good to talk to you brother all right 1-800-588-0335 you want your free reading from mary there is a line open here if you want to grab it grab it now let's see 847 area code you're on the air with Mary Ducina, who we speak hey, with. Bro- hey, brother. It's, it's that uh, that Midnight Creeper from Elgin, brother. Adam. Adam. What? Hell What's on your, yeah. You, you, Hell <laughs> yeah, brother. Do you, wanna, you want a card, or do you want... <laughs> hey. I got a question. <clears throat> uh, okay. Okay. You, oh, oh, oh. I thought you said you got a question. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. For Mary. So, so right now, right now, I'm on, a, I'm on a mission of love right now. I'm about 100 miles... I'm headed to Kansas City. Well, I'm on my way to Lee Summit. I'm going to stop at Kansas City. Yeah. I want to know if I'm going to go visit. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to mission a lot. But is it going to be, you know, it's going to be the stab shack? Is it going on or what? <laughs> oh, yeah. You just want to know be if it's going to be successful week. or not. I got you. All right, I understand that. Totally. Out here for a week. Mission of love. I've been there before. That's exactly what he said. I knew something like that was coming too from this guy. So you know, I knew it. I've so. never had. I've had. I've never had those two words put together. That's interesting. That's an interesting choice of words. I think. I think what he wants to know is: uh, is it going to work oh, out? Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, we're going to get him a charm first. We're going to see what the magical charm wants to show him about his mission of love. Stab. Shack. Oh, now this is interesting. There's a little, that's a great, you got the Eiffel Tower. So that's, that's a historical monument often where lovers go. I mean, I, I think that's one of the places like in Rome where people, you know, they like go, it's one of those great places to get engaged or throw the wishing coins into the fountains like in Rome. So I don't know the whole story. Like, you know, here we've got the Statue of Liberty that came from France as a gift I would look into that Eiffel Tower and what that means, and perhaps either you or your love interest has a strong French connection about them, or there's something about them that's ooh-la-la, you know, with your SS stab check. So the card that you got, it's interesting. You've got the romance suit. You've got the cups, which are hearts in regular playing cards, and you've got the eight, which is expansive and the infinity symbol. And this is the person that has gone into their secret self, the person that has stepped out in a and and they're tempting fate, they're taking a risk, they're on a mission, <laughs> they're on an adventure. I mean it's actually a red cloaked figure in this deck 
with his walking stick and he's under a crescent moon, which is the next phase that's going to happen as we come from the new moon. When we see the new moon again, it is a little sliver of the moon because of the orbits. And there's like a, a wonderful kind of like stream and there's it's at night and there's these beautiful rising rocks around this stream. And this person is like, that's it. I've got the eight of cups. Eight is progress. It's like Jupiter in astrology. This is an expanding vision. So my answer would be yes. And the eighth sign of the Zodiac is Scorpio. We're in Scorpio. So that tells me that this is both sensual and and a, a movable feast. Yeah, it sounds... What do you think, Adam? Do you think that'll work? Oh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, man. So right now... I feel no. good about it. I think you're going to do there fine. Go. If you only got to go 100 miles, you're doing great. Like that, you haven't well, gone no, no, near only the 100 miles. What? Because <laughs> I'm from Elgin, Illinois. Well, so I'm, I'm I uh, went to Iowa. Now I'm going to Kansas City. Let me explain something and then I'll to be you. In Summit. I've been on both yeah. sides of this country looking for love. So do what you got to do. Get it done. You know what yeah. I mean? Hell so. yeah! Ain't no choice but to do it. All right. All right, so, brother. I love it. I I love your I love your spirit of commitment and He's adventure, like, and you yeah. have all the right energy. <laughs> that you have all the right energy, but swirling around you, and I feel like I I want to tell you one more thing before Joe takes the next call. Keep that spirit of good humor. Like I feel like you need to engage. Let this lover laugh a lot. Like keep things light. I mean, you can be as serious as you want to with affection, but I feel like that you need to, your your mission this time is to let them know that when you're around them, life is more uplifted and it's fun. You know, it's like there's nothing heavy. It's just fun. There's no big questions. There's no big interview. It's just like, I've come into your life to light it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There'll be time for oh, serious <laughs> discussions later. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is about, oh. this is, this is about intense joy. And make sure you uh, make sure you wear your mask. All right, have a good time. No, well, no, this is the mother of my child. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just playing with you, brother. You know, so I, 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 I feel a, good about it. Have a good time. Yeah, yeah, call back and right, let us so I'm, know. Hoping, I'm hoping it is. I'm hoping it is. You're making it. Oh, let back. us know. Let us know. Let <laughs> us know. I want to know. I want to hear the. I want to hear the chapter two to this story. Yeah, I do too. I definitely want to hear the chapter two of this story. Thanks for calling in, brother. All right, so let's see. What do we got next? This person here looks like 501. Man, there's a lot of calls from Arkansas. You're on the air. Who are we speaking with? That's you. 501 area code. All right. Going once. I can't do the Art Bell thing. Oh, no. Yeah, you're out. And you're out. Um. So sorry, I can't wait around on them forever. <laughs> call back. No, call back. they got to call back. They yeah, there's call a couple back. lines open if you guys want to call in. So it's one eight hundred five eight eight zero three three five. We still got a few minutes left. Uh, uh, um, I don't know. Like, Bre- if Brett, are you? Brett's been here hanging out too, man. Do you want a reading? Do you want a personal reading Has from he? Mary Dusina? Sure. Yeah. Let's there you that. go. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm switching I'm switching decks. I'm going back to my universal rider weight decks. So I've switched from Morgan Greer, just in case you know your decks. You have to shop, so you may. The card I get for you, Brett, is the Three of Cups. So we're back into the water suit. And this is a celebration card. I often see this card as Beltane. I see this card as as that wonderful beginning of May in the four seasonal realms of, of uh turning of the wheel and the and the springtime the, the full flush of springtime we get to may and i, I may maybe maybe a may birthday is going to play a, a significant message for you and the number three is the month of march if you know your chart you might look at the taurus may and you might also look at the third house do you know your chart uh yeah yeah i don't think i have anything in my third house though at the moment well, you don't have to have you don't have to have planets in your third house. You always want to look at the sign. Everybody always has a sign, and then the dispositor of that sign, the ruler of that sign. So just check into that. The number three itself in numerology indicates a creativity surge. You're certainly involved in that. Let's see what charm you get. Hey, and there's three ladies here dancing. That's always a good thing. Okay, you got a feather. You got a, a gold 
feather, which is interesting. So I feel like that in the the kingdom of nature, it like maybe, you know, when I when I do ceremony and I've got like I've got a whole osprey wing that my one of my beloved uh, First Nations teachers gave me. You know, I had crow feathers before for my smudging, but then I, there was a whole osprey wing that was uh, uh, given to me, blessed and given to me by him, which is known as a sea eagle. So this is a bigger feather. This is not a little feather. This is a bigger feather. So it would be a bigger bird. So this is that feathers may be talking to you. You may notice when you come upon feathers that those are spirit signs. It's coming from the sky element, even though this is a water card. So, and it also could be, when you think about the water signs, when the first water sign, as we're going back to the beginning of the year, the first water sign as you after you've crossed into spring would be coming towards summer solstice because when you look at the way we measure the turning of the year, to me, the first sign is Aries. So from Aries, the first water sign is Cancer the Crab. Are you planning on going to the ocean or is there someone at the seaside or something that you would love to go and visit? The feathers can oh, be that's traveled. One of my favorite places to be. Yeah, okay. I would love to uh, that may be travel sooner back than you down think. to the ocean. Man, yeah, I think that's sooner than you think. I believe that. I believe that's something you're going to gift yourself. I believe that you're going to. I believe the ocean is calling you, and you may look at whether it's an ibis or whether a, a pelican naturally drops a feather. You know, some of the ocean birds, or you come upon a feather as you're walking on the sands of time. But there's something about the ocean is calling you. It's a blending here of the of the chalices, of the cups, the water, and the feather element. So it could it could be that. I mean, I lived in Florida for a long time, and I don't think I ever naturally came across the way we do feather totems or for smudging is that it's a natural. It's naturally dropped, or it was a, a creature that was already deceased and that you just preserve the, the feathers type of a thing in a ritual way. So there's something about bigger feathers. So does the feather make sense to you? No, not on a superficial level that I can think of, but I do vibe with it, if that makes sense. Like, it's okay, just, yeah. I'm being told just to accept it, and you'll, it'll make sense to me. <laughs> well, yeah, and it, I, I would love to hear in the near future, yeah, which feather comes to you. I would love to know, for, you know, from the point of the, of the message, of the insight message, I would love to know what actual feather that you're walking through the woods or you're just walking in your domain or, and then again, when you finally get to the ocean, if you go, well, look there, I'm standing here on the sand. I hear the ocean, the tides, I see the white caps, and there's my feather. And that definitely you yeah. should save it and put it. I have a feather jar. Yeah, I have a feather jar. And so I, I uh, first I freeze them because I was taught by the Indians, you know, freeze them. So if there was any kind of little mites or any kind of little invisible things, you just slide it, you know, slide it into a paper towel or a baggie and freeze it completely because then it, you can rinse it and freeze it. Or you can just freeze it, and then when you can take it out and rinse it, and then you can put cast your intentions and your energies above it, and then you can add it to um, some type of apparatus that you're using to smudge with. Like sometimes people like three feathers, some people like a whole wing, but I feel like that you're going to start this collection of naturally dropped feathers. So the first one's going to be like the magician's feather. You know, it's going to be like the number one feathers. So I believe that I would research what bird that is, what color that is. I would take note to all the components of that. All right. Well, okay. I, I, that there you go, Brett. And I don't know if you got time for one last one. It'd have to be really quick. It's up to you, Mary. I'll do it. All right. I'll do it, yes. Here we go. Real quick. Five, six, three area code. You're on the air. Who are we speaking with? Oh, hey, Joe. It's me, Stephen. Um, hi, Mary. Um, just Hi. calling in for a question. Yeah. Um, I just found out it, today that my grandmother uh, is actually in process of dying right now. Oh man. And I'm just, just kind of wondering what would be a, a good way Bless to, her. I can't be there. So I'd like to be spiritually there for her, but I don't really know where to begin. Number one, you connect with her with your breath. You connect with her with your breath. So anytime that you're sitting or driving or breathing, because here the breath is, you know, we were, we were aquatic creatures. And then we end up when the umbilical cord is cut, we become oxygen bearing creatures. We need the air. We need to be able to have the air, the lungs get cleared. But so when 
you connect with her, you can breathe, you can take a drink of water or wine or your favorite beverage, and then you can actually breathe in first and then drink that liquid like a sense of communion, and you can commune with her spirit, and you can say to her, I appreciate every." thing that you have been, that you are, and that you always will be. And I invite you, I invite you to always be welcomed in harmonious ways for both you and your soul's progress and myself to be able to have this new telepathic communication with each other. And what I got in your symbol with her is like, oh, that's interesting. I'll send Joe a picture of this tomorrow. Maybe he can get it to you. I got two of them fell. One of them is the tree of life inside a circle and the other one oh. is silver it's the tree of life is gold and the silver one is two hearts joined so i have no doubt in my mind that she feels you and the emperor card came up and the emperor has to do with the first zodiac sign the aries the emperor the fire the fire of desire and the fire of our timeless birthless deathless connections and you're hearing about this in the sign of scorpio which is the death of the old and the birth of the new. And I just want to celebrate this and tell you it's the birth of your new way of communicating with your loved one. She may be apparently leaving the earth life, but her soul always was, always will be, and you're connected just by claiming that that right with each other, that, that alchemical bond. Oh, so does that help you out? Thank you. No, you're welcome. And yeah. thanks for calling in. Thank you. Yeah, Bless thank her. You. I'll be thinking of this. I will be. I'll be thinking of this because I know for Joe and myself, we both we both love our grandmas. Yeah, absolutely. I love mine to death. All right. I can't take any more calls. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's over. That's it. We're done. Oof. Uh, <laughs> sorry if anybody else is on the line to get to let you go because we got to get, I got to respect Ryan too. So Mary, what is the final thought, I guess what you would say of this, this uh, new moon here? I want us to really focus on this weekend is a real good time to set intentions and invoke because every new moon, every new moon is about a new seed going into our life soul garden. But next week is the most intense week. Like I think we're, we're going to really start to hear things in this country about the election between the solar eclipse of December 14th and then going to that Yuletide thing. I'm back with you at the new moon in December. I think it is the 14th. So we're going to be together during the eclipse. So this full moon is going to show you where you need to be more quicksilver with your thinking. And and actually silver is one of the colors of Gemini and be more whimsical, be more like both Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. When you come to a Gemini full moon, summon the fake kingdom and summon how you're working with the dynamics of your thoughts and let the creativity fly. Let the creativity fly. Thanks again, Mary, for, for uh, doing this Thank and you, all Joe. of the callers. Thank you, Brett. Love we love hanging you. out with you. Yeah, I love hanging out with you guys too. And we do. Got to get out of here. Don't forget the Tigger Teachings with Ryan Gables coming up next. Thanks, uh, Brett, for coming on and helping me present the Altar Box one. Um, these planets are slingshotting, especially Mars and stuff, right? So it's a good time to do it. Um, perfect. It's yeah. perfect. And magic in Scorpio. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, you guys stay tuned. We'll be back uh, next week. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Be safe. Don't do anything stupid, but be creative. Play, have fun, all that stuff. Love you. Good night. Thanks, Joe.